Now that we've gone through how to optimize the audio really quickly, we're going to go through how to sync them really quickly. So right now, every time we start an online recording, we have to sync it up by clapping. Recording? Okay, recording. recording. Okay, just note to self, there's a one second delay. So three, two, one. Okay, so right there I actually made a slight mistake. I decided to account for that delay, as in I delayed myself by a second. I actually shouldn't have done that. But we go with everyone's first clap. Note to self. So here's the first clap for OC. Here's the first clap for Chuku. And I think this is the first clap for Christine. There's a one. Note to self. There's a Yeah, that's just a rumble. It's not quite there, so we gotta like zoom in more. So I did a one second delay, so I shouldn't have done that. So I have to go off of what I think you guys should have clapped at. Two, one, and then I think you guys should have clapped there. Okay. Okay. Uh, one more time. Three, two, one. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> so I think it's synced up, but a fast way to check is to just look at the edges of the audio. So for instance, I end off talking here and someone else starts talking there. So I just want to listen to see that there's no like interruptions. Or want to start us off. I think our so that seems fine. Now let's go to another section where multiple people are talking and see if there's any. <laughs> <That's> point <laughs> since fire true, is one cause... of like the survival, like this things is... that you need. Yeah, because it makes it a lot easier to cook, and it also makes it a lot easier to. Uh... So right here is rumbling. If just as a side note, R is the razor thing, and you can just take it out like that and stuff or like yeah. uh, bacteria and whatnot and if you guys and have ever played like it's it's kind of like sims it's like a find find a way to <laughs> so that your people survive yeah so i think a hundred percent we I, I, I don't know i'm kind of i don't know i'm kind of the opposite like yeah, yeah i don't yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. i i kind of feel like if we had fire especially during our caveman time attacking each other with it that's exactly like, they'll just really destroy each other I, exactly, <laughs> I had this exact same mindset where it's like okay there are a lot of like positive such violence <laughs> but no there's a reason why okay i think it's pretty much perfectly synced um so yeah that's that's the issue with accounting for delay during syncing just don't do it just just clap after three two one clap everyone together um so normally that's what i would do so all the claps should line up and doing it twice is very useful just in case the first one isn't quite like on the money the second one is like a reference so having two points of references just helps with the syncing process and an easy way now that we're in multi-track let's just go ahead and cover how to quickly navigate and edit the multi-track um, of course, this is a good option to zoom in and out, but I always just use my shortcuts, which is like shift um, plus or shift minus. It's a uh, command, not shift. Sorry, command minus and command plus to um, go in and out. Command shift minus to go all the way out. Command shift plus or equal uh, to <coughs> zoom really, really far <coughs> in. So these are just like different settings that you can set up using the keyboard shortcuts, uh, which I'll go ahead and show you guys. So here's zoom in and zoom out. When I hold command, you can see zoom to preset two and zoom to preset four. And there's a way to set the presets. It's save current zoom preset right here. These are naturally like one, two, and three, and four, and five. So if I'm like zoomed in by this much and I clicked let's say three for instance and then let's go out of it 
and let's find out which one is three. Zoom to preset three. That one for me is this for whatever reason. So let's go ahead and try that. As you can see, it zooms to preset three whenever that happens. So I set up all my presets to zoom in quickly. Um, this one's zoom all the way out. And this one's like zoom in to preset, one of the presets that I made to be really zoomed in. So that's how you set zoom presets. It's really helpful when you're navigating longer clips. So I highly recommend setting up those presets. Um, you can always just type in zoom and it'll show you basically all the um, stuff that you need to set those up. And then another thing that's important is being able to cut all the clips at once, sort of like this. Uh, let me just zoom in a little bit. So we don't need any of this. So what I do, or my method of cutting, there's multiple methods. Most people, I would assume, would use this cutting tool, hold shift, cut it, and then highlight all of these and drag it all the way back. That's one way of doing it. But for me personally, I, I like minimizing the steps. So what I do is hold shift and then equal. And this creates a in to out point to where I just had it. Uh, this is an out point actually that I just created. And then I hold shift and delete and that just gets rid of it. So that's two steps. Normally for me, I'm gonna undo both of that. Normally for me, that's really quick because all I have to do is hold shift hit that button and hit that button and it's and it's just gone. So in order to set that up, or I'll show you what I set up. So it's set in point and out point, except for me, I changed it or I added um, the shift and equal button. So if I hold shift, here it is. That's where I set it to. And then set in point and that would be shift and minus. So shift and delete, I made as ripple delete time selection in all tracks. So that one you have to be careful of because there's a lot of ripple deletes. So you're, the one you're looking for is ripple delete time selection in all tracks. And you want to set that up as uh, shift delete. And then once you do that, you can basically cut really quickly because Let's say I set this as the endpoint. Uh, well, let's clear the selection first. So I set that up as Shift C. If you ever want to clear the in and out points, so here's an endpoint. Here's an out point, and then I just click Delete or Backspace uh, Shift Delete. I mean, so that's how I do it. I'm pretty sure people do it differently. I don't. I have never looked it up, but. Uh, this is just my method. It's the fastest way that I found to edit in the multi-track. Okay, I think everyone clapped that sound, which is pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> See you. Imagine, a Imagine a world. So I started us off, so I would just quickly do that. And then I always normally just go to the end afterwards because we keep the whole thing. Um, you can hit it quite a lot or just use the presets. <laughs> All right, I will I'm hit the note. stop here. Okay. <laughs> Try to attack me. <laughs> <laughs> probably close it there. Uh, so that was, uh, I created a endpoint right here and then shift delete. And that is how I do the editing. If you say, for instance, you wanted to cut somewhere in the middle, let's just do a random one. I'll fix this later, but like this section, you just got to create both the in and out points and then hit delete. And that's, that's how you do it. Um, this way you don't mess with any of it in terms of the, the syncing and all of it gets deleted at once. So that's just a quick tutorial on how to, or how I edit on the multi-track for combining podcast files. Hopefully that was helpful. If you found it helpful, consider giving it a like and subscribing. Thanks for watching.